You are such a mother. Okay, I lost them both at once. All right, so it's now the very beginning of unit two in my relearning art series. Last unit, we went back and relearned the basics of drawing anatomy, but this time I wanna get more specific and just start learning how to draw more dynamic poses. After the success of the last unit, I am looking forward to challenging myself a little bit more this time. But because this unit is building directly off of the last one, I actually don't have very much to explain this time around before we get started. That being said, if this is your first time coming across this channel, I would suggest you watch the last couple videos just so you're all caught up on everything that's happened so far. And I'll make sure that those are accessible right from this video so you don't have to do any extra clicking. But anyway, there is no time to waste, so let's get started with the first tutorial. Okay, so before I actually get started with learning the content of the course for this unit, I thought it would be a good idea to draw a bit of like a control image. So I just wanted to take a dynamic pose from a photo, draw it in the current methods that I'm using, and then see how that turns out. So that at the end of the unit, I have something to kind of go back to, try again, and see what the differences are. Here is the drawing in question, and I will show you what the reference photo was on the screen. It's nothing too complicated. I didn't really want to draw the whole character or anything. I just wanted to get the pose down and see how that would turn out. I know that there's a few imperfections in it, like in this leg area here and probably the, the arms, but I'm overall pretty happy with it. So I think it'll be nice at the end to go back and see how I might do it differently. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get going on the first tutorial video. So I'm just gonna be honest here, this video didn't have a lot of drawing for me to do. I just found myself taking notes on the tips that the guy had, but it was some new information for me, which is good. And then I actually didn't really do much of a drawing exercise on my own this day because I was a little bit busy after. But here are my notes. And then I went to a store that I just really love, honestly. This is just like an international grocery store and I swear to God, it has absolutely everything. I know this isn't art related, but it definitely was the highlight of my day. And I just wanted to show that here. There is just so much interesting and unique things around here. And I discovered that we finally got the original sriracha sauce back. I haven't found it at my normal grocery store yet, but it is back in this store. And that was just thrilling to me because the off-brand stuff is not nearly the same and I would not recommend it. But this place also has all of the snacks that I could ever possibly want. I mean, just look at this ramen section and then the Lay's chips. Like, are you kidding me? Okay. And then last thing here, but this is just the frozen section, which is my favorite part. There's a million frozen desserts and Every single time I'm here, I can't go home without buying at least one. Moving on to day two, we're in a winter wonderland. Um, it had been snowing so heavily the whole night beforehand. And so I just started my day with a little video tutorial. This one was quite different than any of the other ones that I had done up to this point. But I did follow along with it 
This one was more like a life drawing. Like he had a picture of a guy who was clearly posing in a very unique and dynamic way. And of course, I'd never drawn anything like this. So I just followed along with his process in drawing, which was a big shift for me considering how fluid this was versus kind of the boxy methods I had been using until this point. But as you can see, I did get the drawing down. It's not quite as good as his, but it's there. And here are my notes from that day. And then I made up for my lack of drawing on Monday with another little drawing exercise. I decided to continue the tracing exercises that I did in the first unit. This time I had a whole new group of references. I tried to be really intentional about choosing ones that were in the middle of an action so that I could get more practice with like the action lines and foreshortening and making, you know, the closer things bigger, the further things smaller and giving you that kind of perspective. And while we're still on this topic, I did want to mention that I actually did receive a little piece of advice from a comment on my previous video telling me about how important it is to choose references that aren't really obscured by things like baggy clothing. And I didn't actually get that comment until the second half of this unit, so unfortunately you're going to still be seeing a little bit of those references here. But from this point on, I am going to try my best to make sure that I choose references that are a lot easier to see the whole of so that I can get a more accurate understanding of proportions and not sabotage my own progress. But I just thought that was a really helpful little piece of advice that I had definitely overlooked until this point. A little bit of transparency on day three, I honestly really did not want to be on camera this day. So here's a picture of my notes from that video, and then I just went straight into the second half of my tracing exercise. Aside from this one particular reference, I did choose more challenging ones on this day. And here you'll see where I made a mistake with picking a reference. Like obviously this one was terrible because I couldn't see it. I don't even know why I did that. But honestly, you can just take it as a lesson from me. Here's how to not choose references. Okay, and then this one here was actually a really good one. I thought it was a big challenge, but that's what I wanted. And then this last one coming up here is just a bunch of people running. And again, not the best choice because I can't fully see everything. But I did think it was interesting to kind of have one from the back, considering I'd mostly been drawing people from the front. Day four, I had another little tutorial from Proco. I really enjoyed this one, actually. Okay, hi, there I am. I'm dressed like somebody's mother. It was pretty cold this day, so I just chose the biggest sweater that I could. Again, this tutorial was quite different from what I was used to, but I was finding it pretty interesting. It did have all sorts of angles, which was really good because I needed some more practice with that. And then here are my notes for that day. By day five, all of the snow was gone, um, but it was still very cold. So I lit my caramel candy apple candle and decided to get to work. I apologize for the incredibly dark lighting. Believe it or not, it was actually not so dark in person, but barely any natural light gets in through my window, so it's very hard to make it look bright. But just look at that candle. Wow. 
And there are my notes from the last tutorial. And of course, by the time I was finished with that, it was snowing again. So I don't know if you guys have seen this tattoo yet. I'm always wearing, where is, there it is. I'm always wearing long sleeves, so it's not often visible, but I did get it last year when I saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers in concert for the first time ever, which I've been wanting to do since like 2016. <laughs> but I actually found out on my Spotify rep this year that I was in their top 0.5% of listeners, which I don't know how that happened. They're not even my favorite band. They're just a band I really like, but they're not even my favorite. So I don't know, I don't know. My favorite band ended up being number five out of my rap. So <laughs> I guess I'm a fake fan. All right, somehow it's already the second week of this second unit. I don't know how we get here so fast. But anyway, I think it's time for a little bit of a checkpoint and see where we're at so far. So in my last video, I had mentioned that I wanted to change like the order of operations for these courses for me. Instead of doing like a video every other day and then practice every other day, I did all the videos in the first week and a little bit of practice to reinforce the concepts aside from the practice that I got from following along with the videos. So now I'm actually out of video tutorials to watch and I kind of have this whole week just to practice the concepts before I get into doing the assignment. But I will tell you more about what the assignment is when we get there. I did want to take this time to just reflect a little bit on what I've learned so far and kind of how I'm feeling with the concepts. So actually this unit's been really interesting because out of the tutorials that I have been using for this unit, the methods are quite different from the last unit, which surprised me because last unit I was talking about how they're all quite similar and then I thought, you know, I don't know what I expected, of course they're all similar. But this time around I've reached a couple that are like, they're a little bit rounder, they're a little bit rougher, like you can really sketch them out pretty fast. Uh, speaking of these new methods and concepts though, something that has actually come up a couple of times within this unit is the idea of rhythm in character drawing. I have heard of rhythm before, obviously. I've applied it within the context of like my high school art classes because that's the most formal training I've had in art, but I've never actually seen it used in character design, which sounds a little silly. Like again, of course it is, that makes total sense, but the books that I've used up until this point never actually mentioned it, which is kind of funny because it's been the one thing that I think has been the most helpful so far with learning how to draw harder poses. But honestly, I'm not gonna lie about this. <laughs> it seemed when I first started doing that tutorial, like it was a bit of like an academic thing, like something that you'd learn if you actually went to some kind of art school, which I've never done. And that made it seem a little bit intimidating because I'm like, well, I've never had like formal artistic training. So like, I don't even really know what I'm doing. And, and like, I just do this casually. So who am I to start thinking I know anything about these concepts and whatever. But I did still obviously follow the tutorial. And by the end of it, I did find that implementing this concept into how I draw dynamic poses has been a lot more helpful with figuring them out. It is just something that I'm really surprised I've never learned before. Speaking of other concepts that just seem very like academic and like professional and something that I've definitely never ever touched before, one of the pieces of advice that I got from every single video I watched was to practice life drawing or like actual like figure drawing with a model and that's something of course, I've never done that. I've never been remotely close to doing that. I've mentioned before that I've had pictures of my friends making weird faces that I used to draw, but I don't think I could see myself <laughs> doing that type of drawing anytime soon. I'm not even sure if that's something that I have access to around here. Maybe if I pay a couple hundred dollars. But for now, I'm just gonna be using the references that I got off of like a free 
stock photo website and I've been trying to pick one specifically for this unit that have more dynamic poses with more like foreshortening and like layers so for now I think maybe that's good enough but hopefully at some point I will actually have the chance to do that because it is definitely out of my comfort zone but it does seem like a really good learning experience and the last thing that I wanted to talk about that I learned within this unit is about thumbnail drawings which I actually can't believe I've never really heard anybody talk about this before because the idea is very smart. Basically, it's just that you draw a really small version of the pose that you're going for before you do like the official drawing. And that way, it's a lot easier and faster to correct it and get it right first so that when you go to draw like a bigger drawing, you have this little reference that's already correct. So you don't have to spend a lot of time erasing and redrawing the bigger version. And also, it's just a really good way to be able to practice a lot of different dynamic poses within a short period of time because the drawings are so small. Not that I've done a lot of big drawings recently anyway, for the most part. Like, my sketchbook is only... Oh my gosh. My sketchbook is only this big, which, like, I don't know, in front of my face. Like, like, I don't know. But it would be really helpful to draw like some small ones. I saw, he drew some that looked like they were maybe even the size of like, I was gonna say a penny, but I don't have those anymore. It looked like they're the size of maybe like a dime, a nickel, you know, something, a small coin that still exists. Moving on from the things I've learned, I want to just quickly talk about my experience so far. Probably nobody is surprised to hear me say that within the last three weeks, I have really gotten used to drawing bodies and that has totally changed my perspective on things. Now it seems a lot less impossible and challenging and a lot more doable and I would even say it's pretty fun. I'm really looking forward to challenging myself with complex poses which is crazy because I haven't done that in so long. So the fact that I've gone from feeling like it was unapproachable to feeling like it's something that I could just do in a few minutes just for a bit of practice has really changed the game for me. Now that it's the second week and I have some practice to get through, I do want to start off by showing a little bit of the drawings that I did yesterday. So I, this is visible. So I just kind of drew out some of the poses um, that I've been practicing that like tracing, um, that tracing exercise with and did these ones freehand and I specifically chose the ones that I kind of felt like were the hardest. Um, but then you might notice there's one more here that, wait, where is it? There's one more here that is not in the references and that's actually because it's an old drawing that I did in 2015 that I'm not gonna lie, I really hated because I thought the pose didn't make any sense. It was one of the rare times that where I was like, I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna do a pose where like the limbs are moving like and not just the arms, which <laughs> is crazy for like, 15 year old me. But yeah, basically I just redid the pose from the drawing that I did back in 2015 that I did not like the pose of. I didn't think it made any sense. Um, it was a way to challenge myself back then, but even then I was pretty frustrated with the way it looked because I just thought, yeah, this, this pose makes no sense. So I set out to kind of redo it in a way that made more sense. So in this version, I actually have her like looking up with her arms are like waving in the air and she's running. So it kind of looks like she's trying to get the attention of something in the sky um, or something kind of high up. Maybe she's running towards a cliff and there's someone up there. I don't know, but I was kind of proud of myself for this one because it made sense. Yeah. But in general, this exercise was actually fun. Like, I did find it fun to go to the poses that I specifically thought were pretty hard and challenge myself a little bit with those. And honestly, I think this is a pretty good sign for the rest of the course because it's like those things that I definitely found the hardest 
are becoming like fun little challenges to do. And then the other thing I did this weekend on Saturday, I actually didn't draw anything, but I did start another new painting. So I will show pictures of that here, but it's not done yet. So <laughs> if it doesn't make any sense, that's okay. But all right, so I think now that I have told you everything about how I feel about this unit so far, I think it's pretty much time for me to get into the practice for today. Like I said, there's no video to watch, so I kind of just have free reign to practice, but I do have a plan, so. So do you remember the exercise that I did at the very beginning of this unit where I took a reference and then drew it using the methods that I was using from the last unit because I thought it would be cool to kind of have like a side-by-side -side comparison by the end. But I figure since it's the middle of the unit now, maybe I should also have like a midpoint version. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, back at it again with the long chords. Love that. So I just decided that I would do this one digitally because I wanna get pretty good practice with drawing on my tablet. I've had it for a little while, but because my old laptop used to pick fights with me, I didn't actually get to draw on it. So a couple months ago, when I finally got a new laptop, I could actually use my drawing tablet, which was excellent. So I haven't actually been able to use it as much as I would like to, which means that I'm quite rusty with it. Most of my previous digital drawing experience is on a Nintendo DS. So... Any drawing software more complicated than Flipnote Hatena requires a little bit of learning from me. And I have actually used Photoshop before, but it's been quite a while, so I'm definitely getting used to it again. And I think I'm getting the hang of using it for drawing, but I'm still a little bit behind. It can use some more practice. So as you can see, I was having a little bit of trouble with drawing this pose on Monday. I think I redid this at least twice, but then I decided that this version was good enough. So this is where I left off. And let me tell you, day seven, the struggle was not over. I thought it would be really fun to try one of the methods I learned from a video for making up your own pose where you scribble and then you try to find a pose in that scribble. So that's what I'm doing here. At first I was a little bit stumped and then I kind of found a solution to it with this really strange pose. So I took to Google and then tried to find an example image and I thought this one was, you know, kind of what I was going for. So. I started using that as a reference to draw a more like clean version of this pose, but then my camera decided, and you'll see it very soon, it decided to just stop filming. And then when I tried to explain that by writing it on the page, I didn't do it in frame. So I apologize for that, but I decided to give it another attempt and this one went much better. I decided it kind of looked like somebody doing a squat, so I just googled that and I found this example picture and then started drawing it out as its own standalone pose. You might notice that I seemed a little bit confused, though, on what method I was using, and that's an issue that I found myself having between Tuesday and Monday, which is that I was just being a little bit inconsistent with my method and while I think it's fine to kind of mix methods, it was causing some confusion on how to actually go about drawing the pose. So I had kind of mixed feelings on how this turned out. And here's a picture so that you can see the full mess that was day seven. And here we move on to the last day of practice from this unit. So as you can see, I went back to one of the video tutorials from before because I knew that my practice from the previous day was just a little bit all over the place and I decided to learn the concepts again. So here's my notes. 
And then I thought it would be a good idea to re-solidify this further by taking some of the references that I thought were the hardest to draw out and use his method for drawing them as best as I could. This particular reference is one of the ones that I felt was the most challenging, both in tracing and then on the Sunday before when I decided to draw it on my own. But I was actually super proud of how this turned out because I felt like the legs, especially, and the torso looked a lot more dynamic than I had done before. And on this day, I specifically chose references that I thought were tricky. So this next one was a guy that was on a skateboard. And this is actually the only time when I drew that specific reference freehand. But again, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. I felt like it definitely had a lot more fluidity to it than a lot of the other poses that I had been drawing, including the ones from day seven. But of course, I've been having an issue where I don't draw things quite the right size for the space that I have, so they're overlapping a little bit. And then finally, I drew that image from the first day again. I still wasn't happy with how it turned out on the Monday. So I thought, you know what? Now that I've done those two poses that I thought were hard, I'm going to try this one again. So you can't call me a quitter at the very least. Now, I do still have mixed feelings about how this one turned out, but... If anything, I do think that it's more fluid than my other attempts, so I think that's good. But in particular, I find that the shoulder slash upper torso region and the pelvis area are just kind of weird angles that I find kind of difficult to draw compared to other poses. But in the end, at the very least, I saw some improvement, so I was pretty happy with it anyway. All right, so it is Thursday. I was actually just about to start the assignment, but I thought that before I do that, maybe I would have a little chat first. Um, feeling very colorful today. There it is. Uh, got pink eyeliner. Okay. Um, <laughs> really exciting stuff. So before we actually get started on the assignment, I kind of want to go over what it was this time. And so I have it written in this book here, but originally what I was thinking was three different poses, varying complexity. I would do at least one female model and one male model. And then I would just kind of like in the first unit do different colors and layers to show the method that I used and show the different layers of that. So there would be like the body outline, any kind of boxes or cylinder shapes for um, structuring the body, maybe another color for like action lines. That was what I was originally thinking, and I wrote this before I actually ever started this like course that I made myself. So I'm still pretty much sticking to this, but I thought since I've gotten most of the way through this unit, that might seem a little bit static, even if I'm using kind of varying poses. So I wanted to challenge myself with it a little bit more. So what I'm thinking I'm actually going to do this time, instead of just three different poses is draw like a scene with three different characters doing something kind of complex like playing a sports game something where i can still have the three characters still show the layers 
by instead of three separate poses and it feeling just kind of separated and static, I wanted it to all just be one picture, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's basically what I'm trying to do with this assignment. I haven't chosen a reference yet, but I was going to take you with me to do that. And then we're going to start drawing. So this is the website that I've been using to get free photos for references. It's called Unsplash. I found it just because I was searching for some websites and I noticed that a lot of them make you pay a membership to download more than like three photos. And this website is pretty okay and easy to use, but if anyone has recommendations, I'd love to hear them because I do find that sometimes the search isn't really as specific as it should be. Okay, pulling out my tablet, so you know what that means. I'm now doing the assignment. And I'm just going to show you a little bit here because you can watch the actual time lapse in a couple minutes. But for now, here's a little look at the outside. sitting on my desk today instead of the chair. I don't know why, I just thought this seemed a little different. Kind of fun. All right, it is now Friday of the second week. Once again, another assignment down and the unit is about to end. So I used some references that I found of people playing different sports and I picked one and I basically did something very similar to that first assignment still. I did show the layers, I drew them all in different colors so that you could see like the action lines and like the different limbs of the body and kind of the method that I used to build it up. But because this is like an actual picture of people playing a game, the characters do overlap and intersect. So there's not like three distinct bodies like what I had originally decided, but they are all moving in one way or another, or like there is movement to their bodies, so they're not just standing or sitting, but they're actually all doing something. Um, I will say that this one didn't turn out to be quite as dynamic as I was originally envisioning in my mind. I found that when I was looking up references, for the most part, it was always the case of there is one person who's in the middle of an action and then others are chasing them or blocking them or something like that, but it kind of means that there's kind of more like one character who's the focal point and then the other ones, even though they're moving, they're not moving as much. So it was harder to make the characters quite as dynamic as I, was, as I was hoping for. But I do think that ended up being a bit more realistic since that is generally how people play games. So it is what it is. Though I did find that when I was looking back at some of the other references that I had considered using, there is one that I think might have actually been a better choice. And I'm not really sure why I didn't use this one. I think originally I was thinking about the fact that that team was all men and were all boys and the picture that I had actually chosen did have some women in it but that actually wasn't really relevant in the end because they weren't the ones moving they were just kind of in the back and so I cropped them out because I was only choosing three people to draw and I wanted them to be in the most action so <laughs> that actually didn't work out. Speaking of, like, I did originally also have a rule where I wanted to have at least one female character and at least one male character, but in the end, most of the references, again, were either all women or all men, I guess because they're on teams, so usually that's how sports teams go. They're just divided between men and women, so there weren't a lot of co-op pictures, and I thought about just 
using a female reference and like inserting it, but then I thought that might have thrown off kind of like the flow of the image. So I didn't do that in the end. But anyway, I did find that during this unit, there wasn't really that much of a focus on the differences between like male and female figures. So I thought it probably wasn't that important for me to make that difference anyway. I don't know how much of a difference it would have made since I wasn't fully fleshing out these drawings and they're just really like the outlines and basic ideas of the characters. Let's go back to the actual thing that we're here for though, which is the drawing because I've just been rambling about the references for like 10 whole minutes. Um, I was, when I was doing this, focusing a lot more on the ideas of like foreshortening the limbs or making ones that are closer, bigger, and further away, smaller, like I had learned from a lot of the videos. So those were like the main concerns that I had when I was drawing this, is making it look like the limbs were either coming forward or going back. Generally, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out because on one hand, there's still some mistakes going and I do see some areas where I could have exaggerated those things a bit more to get that effect better. And I did find myself kind of gravitating towards just copying what I saw in the photo. Though I did find when I was looking at the photo and the drawing afterward and just giving them a good comparison that the guy in the back did have his legs bent a little bit more in the picture than my actual drawing. And the guy in the front is actually a little bit more leaned in, like a little more action is going on in the photo. And I, so I found that hard to capture is like exactly how much more engaged he was than he was in my drawing. But I do think that getting the fluidity of the action down is something that's going to take me a little while. So I think that for now, this is decent. But all right, now that we're done talking about the assignment that I did, let's move on to the questions that I gave myself at the beginning of this unit that I was hoping to answer at the very end, and that is now. Okay, so the first question is unique to this unit, which is, what kind of improvement have you seen since the very beginning of the series and now that all of the anatomy units are completed? So I definitely feel like I've seen a lot of improvement for myself over the past four weeks. And I'm not gonna lie, at the beginning of this week, I was kind of feeling like there wasn't actually that much improvement and it was getting me down just a little bit. But I did reach a turning point on like Wednesday, but totally changed my mind. So I feel a lot better about that now. The difference between this past Wednesday and the Monday on the week before was actually quite huge. So when I drew that on that first day, I was pretty proud of it because I was like, oh, I actually like did draw it. It's there on the paper, you know, it wasn't too overwhelming. I didn't get too confused. And then on the Monday of this week, when I drew it, I remember getting a little bit frustrated with it. It was just taking me too much time and effort and I was wondering why halfway through the unit I was actually finding it harder to draw than at the very beginning. But I do think that's just because I learned more since then, so I had a little bit more of an understanding of what was accurate than I did when I did it the first time. But on this past Monday, I think that part of the issue with that as well was just that I needed to kind of give it a break and come back and look at it again later because now when I view it, it's really not so bad. And then on Wednesday, there was actually another moment as well where I drew one of the figures that I drew while I was practicing on Sunday that I thought was quite challenging. And I realized that the one I drew on Wednesday was a lot better. The exaggeration in the limbs was a lot stronger, so you could really tell that the closest points were closer and the further points were further back, so I thought that that was a big improvement. And those ones that I did on Wednesday were directly after I had re-watched the video on rhythm, so I feel like that's a good example of how repetition is really useful for learning these ideas and you just have to keep doing it over and over again and going back to the source material and learning the concepts over and over again to kind of like re-solidify them in your mind and in your muscle memory so that you have a better idea of what you're doing. Okay, so it's time for the second question and this question you'll recognize from the first video, um, which is 
how do I feel about my own drawing habits? So once again, I did stick to drawing every day during the week. As for the actual unit's purpose itself, I'm really glad that I did this kind of head on. This was definitely something that was kind of intimidating and felt a little bit tricky because aside from just not really bo drawing bodies very much in the past little while, drawing dynamic poses was something that seemed pretty far out, but because it's been a habit for me and a practice now, it really doesn't seem so scary. And so I definitely see myself in the future being able to kind of uphold this regular study and practice of those things a lot better than I have in the past. So I think that this has been pretty effective. Speaking of though, I wanted to discuss what I had mentioned about on Monday when I was a little bit frustrated with that drawing that I was doing. Earlier this week, I was having a bit of a hard time seeing the progress in my drawings and that's mostly because I think I had a habit of comparing the drawings that I was doing with the drawings from the people whose lessons I was kind of learning from. So obviously my own work didn't measure up to theirs because they've been doing it for so much longer and they're like the experts at this and I'm just starting out. And I think that was kind of clouding my judgment a little bit when really what I should have been doing was only comparing my work to my past work. Um, and just looking for improvements between my own drawings. I personally find that I'm someone who can definitely get caught up in the details where I'm gonna miss like the bigger picture of things, um, which doesn't help. So, uh, and that can, be, that can be really demotivating because then you're just noticing all of the mistakes that you're making and all of the imperfections and it just seems like 10 times and I think that's really just something that can serve as a reminder that I should be focusing more on where I've come from instead of where I'm going exactly, or else I'm going to just kind of hurt myself in the process. And I think that I can kind of look back to the past and think about how when I was only drawing every once in a while, I didn't really have much of a catalog to like compare what I was doing with. So it was even easier to get caught up in that because I would think to myself like, you know, you've been drawing for this long and you're still not good yet. Like you're not like this person or that person or whatever. And then it would just kind of feel pointless to continue. So I would stop drawing again for a little while and yeah, the process would just repeat. But I think now this has shown me that having a more consistent drawing practice and drawing a lot more often um, even if it's not every single day like I'm doing right now is actually like really important to be able to see kind of day-to-day -day progress I think for me that's important but I don't think that's going to work for everyone princess what's the third question I don't think she's gonna I don't think she's gonna ask it, so I guess I have to ask myself again. So the third question is, how do I feel about the next unit? Which is going to be heads and faces. So, um, and I will say that in the past, I've really struggled with like same face syndrome. Where I have drawn like the same face sort of over and over again, or at least the same features. And I've had an issue where sometimes the features don't really go together so they kind of just look like they're floating on a face and i definitely got in the habit of drawing faces really out of proportion when i kind of switched my style so i'm hoping that for this unit i can really learn some variation within facial features where i can draw characters and they all look quite different we've been joined again yeah so with this unit, I'm really hoping that I can find some variation within facial features and come up with different faces that are really distinct from each other because in the past, that hasn't really been my style. <laughs> I tried a little bit earlier this year while I was drawing Pinterest references to kind of go out of my way to draw some different faces. But again, I wasn't really seeking out any advice or <laughs> I wasn't seeking out any advice or tutorials. So my work definitely suffered from that a little bit and proportions were definitely a little bit off. 
I was also trying really hard to stylize them, so that also led to a bit of sameness. So now that I'm doing this in a more structured and guided way, I think I should be able to change those habits. But because I've seen so much improvement overall from the last month, I think that doing this unit will be really beneficial to my drawing skills and I, I'm expecting that I'll come out of it with at least like some sort of improvement. All right, so I know this little reflection of mine has been going on for one hot minute now, but there is one more thing that I want to say before I go, and that is um, thank you to everybody who has been watching or engaging with my content so far. I was actually really surprised to see so much engagement on these videos, even though they are like my very first videos ever. I've never made one before this. But I am really just learning all this stuff for the very first time and I'm hoping to really improve as I go. I'm finding that I'm really enjoying the process of making videos. I think it's pretty fun. So I'm definitely going to continue. And it's really nice because with all the comments and engagement that these videos have gotten, it already kind of feels like I have this little tiny community of people who are both interested in art, they're interested in my art, and they're interested in bettering their own. And I think that's really cool because that's exactly what I wanted to do with this series. So once again, thank you for that. And if you are new and you would like to join this little community, you can just hit the subscribe button. I have so much more coming. But anyway, with that, the anatomy block of this course is finally over and it's time to move on. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I am trying to make these videos more interesting. I don't want them to be too repetitive, so I want to make them each a little bit different uh, while still getting the core concept down. So if there's anything that you want to see more or less of, also feel free to let me know because I could also use ideas when it comes to just adding a little bit of interest. But anyway, if you like this video, please feel free to interact with it so that I know. And I'm also going to leave you with my last couple videos in case you haven't seen them so you can really catch up. But with that being said, I will see you next time. Also, feeling very green today. Yeah, there's the green. This is Princess. The Humane Society named her Princess Peach. We just call her Princess. Yeah, she is a princess.